Hey guys, what's up? It's Kevin for the win. We're back for another edition of Diablo 3. Today on the channel, we are taking a look at the Masquerade of the Burning Carnival set armor for the Necromancer class, which uh, six-piece bonus got a little bit nerfed, but it's not that significant like everybody's making out to be. All right, Masquerade of the Burning Carnival. Two-piece bonus, simulacrums, no longer take damage, gain all ruins, and its cooldown is refreshed when you die. Four-piece bonus, when you have simulacrum, damage is reduced by 50%. Damage you take is split between your simulacrums. Six-piece bonus, Bone Spear cast by you and your simulacrums does 6,000% increased damage. That's where it got nerfed. Okay, on this build, we are going to be using Dainty's Binding, but we're also going to be using a Gould Power. Two-piece bonus, reduces damage taken by 15%, increases damage dealt by 30%, 30% minus damage from Elite Packs, and you also deal 30 plus increased damage. We're going to use Mantorius Petrified Spike to power up our Bone Spears. We're going to be using Dainty's Binding, to power up the damage that we do to our curses. We're going to be using conventional elements, crisp and sentis as well. And as you can see for the necklace, we are running... Oh, switch popped up there. Okay. Haunted Visions, which says Simulacrum now drains 1% of your maximum life every second and lasts forever. They can now duplicate Grim Scythe instead of Skeletal Mage. It's not going to matter because we're just using them for the Bone Spears anyway. But it is very important that you run this. All right, guys. Let's move on now to the skills. Bone Spike, Sudden Impact, that way we have a primary resource generator. Bone Spear, Blighted Marrow. We're going to use Devour, Devour Aura to get some Essence. Simulacrum, Reservoir. We're also going to be using Frailty, Scent of Blood. We're going to be using Bone Armor, Vengeful Armament. You could use Discolation in place of that. Spreading Maldiction for the passive. Serration for the passive, Final Service for the passive, and Bone Prison as well. In the Kanai's Cube, I recommend the Scythe of the Sickle for the Bone Armor, Grim Doors, Marrow Guards, and obviously you need a Captain Crimson Ring so you can get all the set piece bonuses. For your follower, I recommend a Nemesis Bracers and a Flavor of Time. You can also run a Broken Crown, you can run a Gold Skin. Uh, obviously, I was farming Death Breast before, so that's why my follower. Looks that way and doesn't have a broken crown. But really, the flavor of time and the Nemesis Bracers are the things really you need the most in regards to the followers' emnate abilities. Everything else is just kind of a little bit extra. All right. For the purposes of this showcase, we are going to do a greater of 60, 65, 70, 75, and 80. That will show you Torment 13 through 16 difficulty in case you're new to Diablo 3 and just kind of getting used to it and just started playing on Season 24. Which, if that's the case, welcome to my channel. I like to help the newer players out. Okay, let's get into this. All right, first thing you need to do, besides getting a little bit of distance from the enemy, is when you get into the Greater Rift, automatically cast your Simulacrums, and then start, honestly, throwing out your Bone Spears. The farther away you are, thanks to Arzai's Stone of Dungeons, the more damage you will deal. While you are chucking your Bone Spears, however, you will need to activate your Bone Armor. Bone Armor will give you more stacks, which will allow you to do more damage it'll give you a little bit extra tankiness which is important every once in a while though when you see a large area of mobs particularly elite pack it is actually a good idea if you can't take them out of one shot to actually let off a curse because remember cursed enemies that you attack them with the bone spear have take extra damage so that's actually where I, the curses come in very handy having them on here but for all intents and purposes mostly what you're going to do is cast your simulacrum hide way far back in the back, and then just fire off Bone Spears, and you pretty much cut through enemies like a hot knife through butter. Pretty much anything in a straight line that's being shot at with those Bone Spears is going to do a tremendous amount of damage. Now, ironically, the six-piece bonus for the Masquerade of the Barn Carnival set got a damage reduction to it. It's actually slightly nerfed for Season 24 of Diablo because it was overperforming according to the devs. Um, however, as you can see here, if you're using the Grim Norris, uh, Marrow Guards, as well as using, you know what, just your, um, Haunted Visions, as well as what you have set up in your Kanai's Cube and Azay's Stone of Vengeance, you're really not going to ever notice that decrease in damage output from the six-piece bonus because you make it up in our spots, which is very, very important. Now, also keep in mind that the reason we're able to do a lot of damage still is because we're using... The Agulds set. Some people with their Masquerade of the Burning Carnival set don't use Agulds. So, because we're using Agulds, we're kind of already... We used this from when Masquerade of the Burning Carnival came out. I used this. Uh, Agulds 
just, you know, gives us extra damage against Elite Packs, and really, that's the name of the game for Greater Rifts. You're just going to be attacking, looking for Elite Packs to farm the orbs to then get through the Rifts as fast as possible, while also, you know, farming for items and whatnot. So, a gold really is the key to this armor, and why we're able to mitigate the fact that we got a 6-piece set bonus nerf, but we don't even notice it. You see, I'm hitting for trillions of damage in certain situations here. So, in terms of optimization, what should you be doing for this armor? Now, that is the million-dollar question. Well, first recommendation is, obviously, we're not using Captain Crimson, and most of the skills on here don't really require us a lot of cooldown reduction. However, it's never a bad thing to have cooldown reduction, because if we can get our bone armor active a lot more fast, we could get some cooldown reduction on maybe our simulacrums, because there are times that you want. I would still recommend getting some cooldown reduction on here. I would also recommend cost reduction. The reason I recommend more so cost reduction over cooldown reduction is the fact that it's going to cost you essence to fire off the bone spears, and bone spears is pretty much where all your major damage is coming from. So being able to spend less essence to shoot out more bone spears is never necessarily a bad thing. As you can see, Pretty much when you get to the Rift Guardian, you just got to stand way far back and fire your Bone Spears. This is, again, because of the Zayi Stone of Vengeance, which states, um, the further away you are, the more damage you deal to an enemy. So, really, you're like a sniper with the set, and you're sniping enemies from afar. So, you just got to think of yourself as a sniper, and you're just targeting things. Pretty much, your Bone Spear is pointing the other Bone Spears in the direction. All right, that's Greater Rift 60 Tournament, 13 difficulty, 3 minutes and 7 second clear time which is incredibly impressive i should say all right now getting back to optimization this is a greater rift 65 same thing make sure you get your simulacrum off very quickly because if not you'll get squashed very fast and then just start uh maintaining your stacks of bone armor get your bone armors up to the maximum stack as fast as possible and then just continue to chuck your bone spears remember because of your devouring aura you will be able to get back a lot of essence if you feel like you're running low on essence use your bone spikes your bone spikes will also get you back uh, primary resources when you don't have them available. So definitely, that's another way. That's why I put the bone spikes on here. And also, they work with Zayi's Stone of Vengeance because you can attack from far away. And then based on the passes, they also have extra added benefits as well. Uh, when you see tanky areas of mobs or a lot of mobs, definitely make sure you activate a curse before you fire off the bone spears. Because you'll be able to do increased amount of damage. It's very important to really, as you get higher up in the gray areas, to definitely make sure you do. Oh, this switch control is acting up a little bit today. All right. Well, this is actually, like I said before, with the curses, it's very important to curse a lot of the elite packs, especially as you're getting higher up on the greater rifts, because they have a tendency to have more HP, and you can deal a lot more damage. And most things where you're just going to be attacking from afar with your bone spear, and you want to keep an eye on your essence. Now, like I said before, in terms of optimization, cooldown reduction, but more so, I would say resource cost reduction is more important because you can spend less essence to fire off bone spear. From there, I would recommend, because the Necromancers desperately need it, crit hit chance 6.0% on your helm. I would recommend on your gloves these free stats. Crit hit chance 6.0%, crit hit damage 50%, attack speed at least 7.0%, 8.0%. If you get a 6.0%, that's not bad either, as long as you have the crit hit damage and the crit hit chance percentage on the gloves. Obviously, you're at the mercy of RNG to get the perfect stats that you need for your particular armor pieces but i would recommend those because you will be able to do more critical hit damage which benefits the necromancer class in particular as well as it's just going to do more damage in general anytime you can do more damage that's not necessarily a bad thing in diablo 3 at least in my personal opinion also remember you gotta maintain those bone armor stacks because you're getting off more damage that way as well so keep that in mind so definitely a lot of things to figure out here uh, I probably should curse that one, but then we're going to attack from far. Also, remember to keep enemies at a distance from you, because even though you can take a lot of things out from close up range, you do the most damage when they are very far away from you. Uh, further optimization, obviously, we're not really using anything on this set outside of Bone Spear, so I would recommend anywhere that you can power up your Bone Spear by 15%, definitely do it. Everything else is kind of throwaway. You don't really need to power up your Bone Spikes. You don't need to power up your Simulacrums because you're not using Grim Scythe. Some people use Grim Scythe over Bone Spike. I prefer Bone Spike because, again, I'm using my Zay's Stone of Vengeance. In terms of the Legendary Gems, Bane is Stricken, Bane and Trap, Zay's Stone of Vengeance are the way you want to go. There's really no other combination of Legendary Gems that is going to work very effectively here. It's actually in your benefit to level up the Zay's Stone of Vengeance as high as possible 
from the get-go because that you're going to need more so even than the Banner Stricken. So definitely keep that in mind. Now, in terms of Season 24 for Bone Spear Necromancer, uh, if you're playing the Necromancer in Season 24 and you do a seasonal journey, you have perhaps one of the worst possible starts of any class this season because you have the Tragul's avatar set. I did do a Tragul's avatar set starter build in my playlist. It's available if you click on my Diablo 3 playlist in case you need kind of like an idea of how the heck you can kind of make a horrible armor at least be semi-usable. So definitely check that out. But uh, Tragul's avatar is your starter set. My recommendation the minute you see any of these pieces for the ma the full pieces of Masquerade of the Burning Car Carnival drop, I would recommend switching to this because this is the S-tier armor and it's the easier of the two S-tier armors to use for Season 24 of Diablo. The other type of S-tier armor is the Legacy of Dreams Poison Scythe build, which is using the Legacy of Dreams Legendary Gem with specific random pieces of armor all together to be able to do something very specific. I have a Season 23 guide of that available. The information still applies for Season 24. I will be re revisiting Legacy of Dreams Poison Scythe in the not-too-distant future on this channel, but it's still a little bit off because I still want to cover a couple of armors before we get to that first. All right, that was a Freeman 52-second clear time. All right, moving on to the next Greater Rift. This should be a Greater Rift 70, if I remember correctly. If I looked correctly, personally. All right, so... Same strategy, make sure you activate your simulacrums, then make sure you get your stacks of bowman armor to their maximum possibility, then just start firing off your bone spears. Now again, as you get higher up on the greater rifts, the mobs tend to take more hits and they will cost you a lot more essence to be able to take them out. So how do you mitigate these type of problems? Well, this is where bone spikes comes in invaluable because you can use a bone spike and attack a target and you'll get back a tremendous amount of essence. Furthermore, something else that you could do is, even though your simulacrums are activated, if you click your simulacrums in when you have them available after a cooldown, you can reset the simulacrums, which because of Reservoir will give you back a large amount of essence. That is how you kind of mitigate burning through your essence, because if this armor has no essence at all, you cannot fire your Bone Spears. And in higher grade rifts, if you have a moment where you can't fire off Bone Spears, you are in a significant world of hurt. You probably will get squashed. Uh, also, something that you have to keep in mind is because this is a bone spear set and the bone spears don't curve and you can't control them or curve them around things, they fire in a straight line. Meaning, on certain dungeon layouts where there's a lot of twists and turns or there's a lot of corners and a lot of walls, sometimes you will have to be more conservative with your bone spears because you might be chucking things off in the distance into a wall into a door and not hitting enemy targets that's a big mistake that a lot of newer players to the masquerade of the burning carnival set armor make uh eventually as you play more diablo free you kind of will become super familiar with all the possibilities of dungeon layouts and how they're going to spawn because even though there's some minor elements to rng all the dungeon layouts are taken from actual regular maps in the story mode campaign so you kind of have an idea as to where doors are placed where turns and twists are going to be if you've played enough of it so you get used to it but for newer players you definitely have to be careful with those bone spears it's very tempting like with our armors where you spin to win where you could just hold them by that you just keep firing off bone spears in the distance not looking that's not the case if you do that you are going to waste essence you're not going to have enough essence and then you are going to get squat heed my words because i'm almost certain because it always happens, no matter what, in one of these guides where somebody wasn't paying attention to the video, or they fast-forwarded a little bit, or they weren't listening correctly, and then they say, hey, this is not working for me. Why is that? You didn't say it right. No, I said it right. You just weren't paying attention to it. This is why it's very important to watch the whole video. Um, there will be a link in the description to the sample armor build. Um, so for those of you who might need a better explanation of it on paper, maybe need to see exactly stat distribution, and you have a harder time maybe keeping up, uh, which is perfectly cool, right? Because some people just look at things better on paper than they do in video demonstration. I will provide the sample armor build. It will potentially vary for my particular build because my build is significantly uh, different from the Icy Veins ones because I take a couple of my own freedoms on it 
Okay, for Rift Guardians like that, I say it's very important to go curse first and then hang back and fire the Bone Spears. And remember, when you curse an enemy, you're doing more damage with the Bone Spears. So that's why it's kind of important to go curse and then fire off the Bone Spears. Make sure you have a lot of distance too because that's always very important and some people are very lacking in regards to that. Like, the closer you are, the less damage you do with the set. So this is zoning. If you're familiar with fighting games, then you know that you got to do the zoning principle here. Oh, there was a little enemy there. All right. So... Let's see here. Let's go back to Oric and see exactly what the clear time was here. Exactly what Greater Rift. Greater Rift 70, 3 minutes and 28 second clear time. We're going to move on to a Greater Rift 75. All right. Greater Rift 75, same strategy as before. Make sure you cast your Simulacrums at the beginning. If not, you're going to get squashed super fast. Next, you want to activate your Bone Armor, and then you will fire your Bone Spears. Think of your Bone Spears as a hot knife for butter. They fire off in a straight line. As long as you have a clear sight of that straight line, you will pretty much be able to devastate enemy. This is ironically the best dungeon layout for what I was talking about before. This is a dungeon layout where there is a lot of twists and turns. It's very difficult to control your bone spears, which is why you have to be more conservative with how you use them. Also, you don't have as much time and distance between things, which is why it's kind of important to use even bone spikes because you can stun an enemy that will allow you to get a wee bit more distance. Some people prefer, however, bone spikes to use the Grim Scythe and the Simulacrum. This is good if you weren't using Malturius' Petrified Spike, and let's say instead you were using Tragul's Corroded Fang, which is a build in itself. I don't like that build. I prefer getting all my damage centered and focused just around my Malturius Petrified Spike. I don't like Grim Scythe. I don't like going super up close and personal with some of my builds. Uh, I already have a build that does that and does it better. That's called Legacy of Dream Poison Scythe. So that's why I don't use Grim Scythe. But probably in the link in the description is going to recommend Grim Scythe. I recommend Bone Spikes over it. But again, this is my own uh, personal take on the Masquerade of the Burning Carnival Necromancer Bone Spear build. For those who are wondering, this is the S tier build. This is the particular armor set that a lot of people who, who run Necromancer run. Because A is super powerful, you are able to pass through things very quickly, you're able to dominate things very quickly and efficiently. The other thing is, it's very easy to optimize for this. If you're new to Diablo 3 and you're probably trying to figure out where you get the golds pieces from in particular, what you need to do is do a whole bunch of bounties, as well as a whole bunch of, well, mostly bounties, because you do bounties, and as you're doing bounties, you're going to run into goblins that have a chance of dropping the gold pieces are the plans for the gold pieces in their caches. Uh, another thing is that you also, as you complete bounties, will get a Tyrael cache. The Tyrael cache has a significantly high chance of having the gold sets plans drop from that as well. You're going to need the gold set to be able to do this type of damage with this particular arm. So I recommend doing bounties. Do like two hour, maybe three hour run. You should have then the plans that you need for this and many, many other type of things in case you want to switch out builds to something else. Uh, our good thing about bounties is you're going to get a lot of blood shards. On top of getting a lot of blood shards, you're going to be getting a lot of death breaths. On top of that, because you're doing bounties and getting caches, you're going to have a lot of materials that you can use for your Kanai's cube to be able to um, extract legendary powers that you are going to need for this particular build. So you can kind of kill three birds with basically one stone if you do a whole bunch of bounties. Um, as for Maltorius' Petrified Spike, how would you go about getting that? Well, there's two methods. The first method uh, is a bit more RNG heavy. What you can do is you can pick a Greater Rift that you feel comfortable at clearing uh, Greater Rifts at basically two to three minute clear times. Pick a Greater Rift. The higher the difficulty, the better the loot drops are going to be naturally. But pick one that you could do two to three minute runs. Four minutes aren't so bad either. And you do about two hours of it. In two hours, you are potentially lucky. You might be able to get some of the pieces of the stuff that you need, like the bracers, and you might get the Metorius Petrified Spike. If, however, RN Jesus is not being kind to you because you have probably sinned to RN Jesus at some point, what you can do in that case, I'm going to curse here and then fire Bone Spear, and you see because of the curse's applied effect, plus everything's going off, we're able to one shot that uh, Greater Rift Guardian with ease. Uh, like I was saying before, though, uh, you know, the alternative method, if you can't get the Maltorius Petrified Spike that way, is you could just buy two-handed sword weapons. And as you buy two-handed sword weapons, 
you can upgrade them from rare to ancient legendary or legendary uh, through Kanai's Cube. And the problem with that is you're going to be spending a whole bunch of death breaths. The added benefit, however, is that you will have a better chance of seeing the Maltorius Petrified Spike dropping from the two-handed swords because it's a very limited chart number of things that could possibly drop from there. So you'll spend a lot of resources, but you get more in return. Greater of 75, Torment 16, difficulty, 3 minute and 50 second, clear time. Very, very impressive. This armor is very, very powerful. You wouldn't even think that this armor got nerfed based on the way that it is doing its damage output. Um, really, that extra, you know, the six-piece nerf is not going to really factor in too much. Uh, it might factor in as you're getting to the very, very high up echelon of uh, Greater Rift. Like, I'm talking 140, 145. Uh, with this armor fully optimized, for fully optimized, I mean that you have all ancient legendary or primal ancient legendary pieces for the armor, the necklace, the rings, the weapon, and anything else that is used on this build. Uh, you augment the armors between, let's say, preferably the higher the level, the better, but let's say between 80 to level 100. You should, in theory, be able to clear a greater 140 to 145, maybe even 150 solo depending on your skill level depending on your perfect optimization remember diablo 3 is a journey or not even a journey it's a marathon not a race people who want a super fast powerful build and want to spend the least amount of time on it this is not the game to play it does not work that way this is not like playing monster hunter rise where you can kind of grind super fast for the things you need and maybe be done with a perfect build within a day and then just kind of that's it Diablo 3 doesn't work that way. You're working on a lot of RNG. You need certain roles. You need certain stats. You need certain pieces. It is a marathon, not a race. It is about the destination, not so much the journey. That is why many Diablo 3 veterans, many Diablo 3 players continue to play it. This is the basic nature of any type of dungeon crawler. So if you are not patient and you're not willing to grind for hours on end, maybe weeks on end, maybe months on end, Maybe years on end sometimes because RNG can be very, very cruel to certain people. Um, this may not be the game that I would recommend for you to be playing because there's no easy route to winning in Diablo 3. Even getting the Wrath of the Waste set built up and everything and fully optimized, uh, it's easy at first, but as you get higher up in those greater rifts, it's not so easy. You need to level up gems that take a very long time to level up to very high levels. So again... If you are not patient, this may not be the game for you. Because I do get a lot of interesting comments. People are like, how can I make this fast? How can I get this fast? How can I do this fast? There's no fast way to do anything. There's only efficient ways to do things in Diablo 3, which is what I try to focus on in these guides. Efficiency doesn't mean it's fast. It just means it's effective in what it does. Uh, case in point, as you can see, I think this is pretty effective and efficient armor to use if you follow the advice that I've provided you, as you can see on screen, we are not struggling even in greater of 80. In fact, I could probably do 90 and 100, although I'm not going to do that because it'll be like a 45 minute video and we don't really need to see that necessarily. But I could push very high up with this and this isn't even fully optimized, guys. This armor is actually non-fully optimized. It's got maybe three augmentations at best. So you can just fathom, you could just maybe imagine perhaps how good this armor will be for you if you have full optimization. So like I said, if you're rocking track ghouls because that's your starter set, swap out to that the minute you have all the pieces of Masquerade of the Burning Carnival. This will do so much better for you. You're not going to be able to really, you're, struggle, you're going to struggle. I made the guide. I showed you guys on paper. It's not worth the type of aggravation to try to rock track ghouls. But yeah, definitely this is the way to go if you want high leaderboard placement. This is... Perhaps right up there, maybe tied with the best S tier armor in the game. I think the only things that come near it right now are Whirlwind Barbarian and Gears of Dreadland. And then you get maybe Mundanugu. And I'd put maybe Patterns of Justice after that and Chateau de Mvir after that. And then, you know, so this is really up there. This is like within the top three S tier armors to rock, especially in Season 24. So I definitely recommend it. Uh, definitely would recommend it. If you're a fan of Necromancer, definitely, definitely run this one. Um, there are no really other ones outside of Legacy of Dreams, Poison Scythe, but that's a very specific build that I can't really 
like, explained here in this video. I have it available on my playlist, Season 23. I will do it in Season 24 very soon. I got a couple other armors I gotta get out of the way first before we get to that particular build. Um, you know, I want to revisit the Typhon set in particular, because that's a S-tier wizard build. And I also need to revisit something else that we haven't covered yet, Wrath of the Waste, for the Barbarian, which I believe is going to be, if I remember correctly, the next video that uh, airs for our Diablo free content after this particular one. So, and keep in mind, in August we are doing Diablo free videos three times a week for the month of August, then obviously as Diablo season, or Diablo 2 Resurrected comes out, the schedule is going to change a little bit. We might do more Diablo 2 than we do Diablo 3. I'm also waiting to see exactly how Blizzard in particular handles uh, things in regards to whether we're getting more seasons for Diablo 3 and or if they're going to just try to wean everybody off and then it's Diablo 2. Also, the audiences and what they want as well because I like to listen to these guys. All right, that was Greater Rift 88, four minute and two second clear time. Full optimization, you have like a minute or two minutes on that one, generally with ease. All right, I think that pretty much covers just about everything that I did want to cover here. We are going to identify some of the loot. I don't think we got any Primal Ancient Legendaries to drop. Um, in case you guys are wondering for Primal Ancient Legendaries to drop if you're playing a seasonal character, you have to basically complete a Greater Rift 70 solo. This is something that shows up in your seasonal journey objectives. Sometimes it's chapter 4 seasonal journey objectives. Sometimes it's chapter 5. It, it's pretty up there in the beginning. Like, it's close to the beginning of it. I think it might be chapter 5, though, because uh, Greater Rift 70, clearing it in chapter 4, when you don't have your Hadrid's Gift, can be present a problem for a lot of players. So I think it's chapter 5 when you probably see it. But that's how you get Primal Ancient Legendaries to drop for Seasonal Cairn. You know, if you've already done a Greater Rift 70 solo non-seasonal, then all your characters have access to Primal Ancient Legendary. It's just Seasonal is slightly different in terms of that particular mechanic. Alright guys, so that's going to do it for today's Diablo Free video. As always, a like on this video is greatly appreciated. If you're not already subscribed to the channel, consider doing so as it helps the channel grow. And I will see you for the next Diablo Free video. Till next time.